Kulkarni, has China's bluff been called out or is that premature to say so? Uh, thank you, Gaurav. Uh, firstly, at the outset, let me tell you, the Chinese have been making all these noises primarily to be able to say that they have arrived. It isn't so. China understands its limitations. China knows in the backdrop of COVID-19, backdrop of Ukraine, backdrop of the sanctions on Russia being imposed and what Russia is going through. China knows that its economy is export-based. It knows what's going on internally, how the banks are collapsing, the inflation in China. So obviously, China, and Americans have clearly stated that of course they do believe in a one China policy, but at no point of time can China invade Taiwan. Should Taiwan wish to join, no problem whatsoever. The Americans stand for a one China policy, but definitely an invasion by China is not what the Americans want, and the Americans will stand by Taiwan. So that is a messaging which has been done. And obviously in this backdrop, the Chinese probably thought that they could, well, you're rightly saying, a bluff being called out, Xi Jinping been wanting to say, well, if you cross the red line, you're playing with fire. All these were rhetorics that could be used and all of No, but happening. what do we see but happen yeah. over the next 24 to 48 hours? Because Sana Hashmi, and before I bring in Jonathan, Sana Hashmi, is this a major loss of face for Chinese President Xi Jinping? He won the US president and yet Nancy Pelosi has landed. I think it was a, it is still primarily psychological warfare and if we look at it, it's primarily for the domestic audience. If you look at the videos that are coming out from China, the tanks at Xiamen, uh, if you look at it, people, uh, lo local citizens of Xiamen are there roaming around on the beach. So I think it's primarily for the local uh, people. And uh, I think they, what they did in the past two days was primarily, they thought that uh, perhaps uh, the visit might be called off if they continue. Okay, give me a moment as we re-establish that audio link with you. Uh, Jonathan, your appreciation, loss of face for Xi Jinping, or will he try something to save face before his uh, proposed third term, uh, given the fact that they're already talking about banning trade or banning trade with some hundred companies that export agricultural products uh, to China. Uh, will they escalate economically, or can they also escalate militarily? I would anticipate some sort of escalation, uh, bringing it to the brink of war, uh, as one of the commentators said earlier, I, I doubt that. Uh, she is in a position in which a war would not benefit him at this point as, as he's preparing for the, the Communist Party Congress uh, and trying to hold on to power uh, given the pressures that, that China's under. But China is no small nation, very powerful nation. Uh, it has exerted pain on the United States, certainly did during the Korea War that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it still can, still has the capability uh, in its relations regionally uh, and economically. So there are ways to exact some pain in here. And she certainly does need to save face uh, from his perspective uh, because uh, if you're holding on to power, you have to show power. If you're holding on to power in a non-democratic way, often when you're an autocrat, you need to show some strength. Otherwise, you get yourself in a lot of trouble. So I didn't anticipate some difficulties ahead, whether that means menacing the Taiwanese Air Force, the way this has been going on for far too long, uh, ratcheting up things, trying to exhaust the economic pressure that we're seeing, of course, with trade between the mainland and Taiwan. That can happen as well. This was a symbolic move by Nancy Pelosi. It comes at a time in which uh, her party, of course, is looking at the uh, midterm elections coming up. So there's some of that. It comes at a time in which the United States has, has been in a very uneasy uh, position vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan and some of the other uh, perceived uh, geopolitical and policy decisions that have affected the United States' standing, as, uh, as the standing of the Biden administration. It is a show of strength. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and, you know, how, how it goes from here depends on how, how much of a fight she wants to make out of this. The United States clearly is not wanting to give up on its support of Taiwan. That has been the posture for decades. It almost came to nuclear blows under the Eisenhower administration. Yes. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're in this game and we're in it. And this, you know, could be arguably a very uh, helpful uh, signal to Beijing. Look, don't, don't push it. Uh, you try to pull off something like what we've seen Vladimir Putin do in Ukraine, and you're going to get in a hill of trouble. So, but, keep, but keep if, if, if I were to take that, that example, 
the attempt was to put Vladimir Putin in trouble. It's Europe that appears to be in trouble, especially with winters approaching. Um, and uh, that's one aspect. Is, is Putin in trouble or is Europe in as much uh, trouble or likely to get into more trouble? And carries once again, if I could bring you in, what kind of escalation and retaliation do we anticipate uh, or apprehend as far as Taiwan is concerned?